Hello everyone, my name is Jerry Zhao and I'm from Panasonic Corporation Automotive R&D Center. Today, on behalf of Asia Virtualization Expert Group, I would like to talk about Vert.io, a common and standard device virtualization framework, which we believe to be a key technology to achieve software-defined vehicle. First, let me give a brief introduction about Virtualization Expert Group under the Automotive Grid Linux. This EEG started activities from 2017 and mainly in charge of design and implement virtualization solutions for AGL. We have a bi-weekly call and members from different fields are joining. Our expert group has a wide range of interest points around virtualization of automotive and nowadays, our EEG is focusing on applying and extending Vertel for diverse AGL use cases. In our today's presentation, I will talk about the following three topics. Why device virtualization is important for software-defined vehicle. How Vertel can be served as a common device virtualization framework and what current progress and future activities of AGL device virtualization are. First, let's talk about some background. As shown in this picture, it is an era of change in the automotive industry that the cockpit is transforming toward fully digitalized. Cockpit instruments are going to be filled with various digital instruments will be controlled by fewer ECUs, probably by only one single ECU. This concept is called ECU consolidation. In such consolidated ECUs, the virtualization with hypervisor technology is one of the mainstream approaches to realize the partitioning between various applications diverse in function safety and security. Now, let's have a look at the overall history of virtualization. In the historical trend of general computing architecture, it has been going back and forth between centralized and distributed architecture, driven by the fluctuation of cost and performance of processing, memory, and communication. This means there is no constant optimal answer. This slide shows a similar concept with the previous page, but focusing more on the processor hardware and software. As you may find, physical architecture also keeps changing, and physical system scale stays diversified even in the same architecture. In such variable situation, virtualization has been constantly the key technology to preserve our most expensive asset, that is, of course, software. This is exactly the one of the primary mission of software-defined vehicle. The virtualization technology include both CPU and device virtualization, as shown in the bottom picture. I would like to stress that for preserving software assets, device virtualization is critically important, possibly more than CPU virtualization. In the automotive computing architecture, there are some specific necessities or needs for device virtualization in addition to the general ones which I mentioned in the previous slides. The first necessity is simple. Depending on car grade or car model, equipped devices may vary. For example, even for the same car OEM, there are a variety of displays for different car grades or car models. Number, size, or aspect ratio of displays can be different. Thus, we need common abstraction for such diverse devices to preserve software asset. The second necessity is rather complex. Automotive computing architecture is currently a pretty much distributed one, consists of a lot of ECUs. In this environment, allocation policy of a particular application software to a specific ECU and allocation policy of a particular device to a specific ECU are different. Optimal location of application could be decided by cohesion of functionalities or information 
or by load characteristics of application, such as vector heavy or neural network heavy, and so on. On the other hand, optimal location of devices could be decided by physical distance to ECU or by specific peripheral interface channel of ECU and so on. So, application software and relevant devices do not necessarily locate it on the same ECU. Furthermore, it varies among car model or vehicle generations. Even in such environment, we need to preserve our software asset. So, from application point of view, Location transparency is another critical issue. Thus, we need device virtualization technology that satisfies these two necessities. But someone might think the necessity could be mitigated when the centralized architecture is deployed. However, the same necessity is still there because a single centralized system still consists of multiple virtual machines and, as shown in this figure, logical architectures stay similar. This example depicts the general notion of device virtualization from application point of view, which I have explained so far. In this example, virtual display and virtual storage are defined. The application software can treat them as if its own dedicated devices. Those virtual devices are physical location agnostic and highly abstracted. For instance, a part of this virtual display is mapped to a specific part of a specific display connected to a specific ECU in the distributed case, or a specific virtual machine in the centralized case. The mapping can be changed by some management program. Application software is not involved to the specific details of physical world. Application just needs to treat virtual display model, and the virtual display is mapped to physical world by the device virtualization software behind the scene. Thus, application software asset is preserved among various physical configurations, and this makes the software-defined vehicle a reality. In the previous session, I have explained the necessity of device virtualization for software-defined vehicle. Luckily, we can take advantage of standard and popular word I.O. as this kind of common device virtualization framework for automotive. Let's look at the previous situation around AGL virtualization first para virtual device driver layer and even part of the application platform layer, such as AGL, depended on both hypervisor and SOC. This was because most of the previous hypervisor solutions had proprietary para virtual device implementation and thus had incompatible para virtual device interfaces for upper layer software. It was undesirable fragmentation so that OEM and Tier 1 would not have enough freedom of choice in virtualization solutions. It was unhealthy from ecosystem point of view. AGL WordEG solved these pain points by introducing WordIO as the standard framework for device virtualization into AGL. Vertel is an open source implementation of para virtual device framework and has been utilized extensively in cloud servers in our region. By introducing Vertel, there will be a common interface and implementation for para virtualization devices. Thus, enhanced freedom is guaranteed to choose optimal hypervisor and SOC for automotive needs without modifying upper layer software significantly. When we talk about virtualization in AGL, this is critically important. Moreover, Vertel can be applied beyond virtualized AGL. Vertel can be utilized as a well-defined device hardware abstraction layer, even for non-vert AGL, which may further help reduce fragmentation across the stocks and encourage AGL-ready BSB. On the other hand, when we're thinking about cloud-native development, 
which means developing and testing in cloud and then deploying in the real hardware, using Wordel as common interface with cloud-based AGL will further enhance interchangeability between cloud AGL and native AGL. Hence, recognizing Wordel as a common device interface will maximize the commonality of AGL software among SOX, virtual environment and non-virtual environment, and even cloud and non-cloud environment. That's not all for Vertile, not only limited to single ECU architecture, with the well-defined front-back architecture of Vertile, it can also be applied to multi-ECU use case to realize a virtualized device across different ECUs and from the application point of view, it just utilizes the virtual device without needs to care about detailed location and logic of physical devices. In general, device virtualization with Vertile benefits in establishing a complete and healthy ecosystem for AGL to enhance interchangeability and interoperability in various scenarios no matter it is hypervisor environment, non-hypervisor environment, cloud environment, or even multi-ECU environment. Next, after introducing all these concepts of device virtualization, I would like to explain about the current progress and future activities of AGL device virtualization led by VertiG. First, regarding the Vertile work for hypervisor environment, starting from AGL Kokikoi, Vertile was officially supported as a common AGL device framework for virtualized AGL with basic device support like block, input, display control, and extra. During this year, our EG then extended the Vertile support to more multimedia devices to enhance the automotive use cases, such as sound, SEMI, video decoder and encoder, and camera. Next year, we will start discussion and development for more advanced multimedia features, such as camera control, work and support GPU, Bluetooth, and extra. Our EG member company, Linero and Open Synergy, will give two demos related to Vertile from different angles. In Linero's demo, they will use the same AGL image to port across different platforms with the help of standard device interface Vertile and standard firmware interface UEFI. Their demo highlights portability, which is essential for the software-defined vehicle. On the other hand, in Open Synergy's demo, they will show the latest AGL version Lucky Lamprey with latest Vertile multimedia features like sound, SEMI, video, and camera on the top of AGL reference hardware. Their demo highlights easy software updatability and feature extensibility brought by Vertile, which is another important perspective for software-defined vehicle. Now, let's watch Linero's demo first. Hi, my name is François Frédéric Ozog, and I work for Linaro. Linaro is a non-profit organization that orchestrates collaborative engineering for ARM silicon providers and software providers. We have now five minutes to explain platform virtualization and make a demo. To become a full cloud native solution, AGL needs device virtualization and platform virtualization. Let's dive into platform virtualization and start with Vertio IO MMU. After verifying that SMMU emulation in a VM was not the best approach, Vertio IO MMU was implemented to allow device assignment to VMs in a secure manner. It also presents an abstract interface that makes it available across processor architectures. 
The same pattern can be applied to a CMI, which deals with frequency scaling and access to sensors. Rather than emulating an SCP, let's create an abstract virtual device that has the potential to be used in different architectures and shield VMs from the evolution of the SEMI interface in the ARM world. For trusted execution environments, we can apply a similar pattern. A mediator in the hypervisor plays the role of a Vertio backend for the team. The most robust cloud native environments rely on secure boot, kernel address space randomization, or even anchoring signatures checking in the VM to the hardware root of trust. For the broad part, the simplest way to implement this is to adopt System Ready standard. System Ready fully decouples OS from the firmware implementation by adopting the UFI interface. So, in this context, the boot functionality and behavior is the same regardless if the AGL kernel is booted through UBoot or EDK2, with the Vice 3 or SCPI description, on real hardware or in a VM. To implement System Ready in a virtual platform, a number of Vertio devices are necessary. Vertio IO MMU to perform device assignment and protects against DMA attacks. Vertio TPM for measured boot implementation. Vertio R&D to address randomization. Vertio Watchdog to, progain, to protect against non-booting kernel. Vertio RPMB to write UFI secure variables and trusted application secrets, for example, the Netflix DRM. Or Vertio SEMI for frequency scaling. I guess it's now time for the demo. We will be booting the same kernel on a Raspberry Pi with U-Boot plus UV and in a VM with EDK2 plus UV. The Raspberry Pi has been powered on, Video BIOS brings in U-Boot, and U-Boot starts AGL according to the UV standard. Now the system has booted successfully, and we can see the AGL demo running. Let's check the SD card characteristics. Uh, this is a 128 GB card in three partitions mounted as MMC. We'll try to check that when we will be booting the, the server side. So let's power down and move the SD card to the SATA adapter. We will boot uh, the Socionext server in Ubuntu uh, 20.04. Now that's operating, let's check the SD card. It is uh, mounted uh, as a SDA. You can see the 128 gigabyte, the three partitions. This is going to be mapped directly into a virtual disk, so we can see a SDA in the drive definition. Let's launch the VM. So we can see this is also booting UFI. The AGL kernel reports the UFI stub. And now the AGL demo is successfully running in the VM. This concludes the demo, where we saw that System Ready effectively allows abstraction of the boot process. There are still a few missing Vertio devices to, for full platform virtualization, but they are in the works at Linaro. Thank you very much. Then it comes to Open Synergy's demo. Hello, I'm Marcel, Marketing Manager from Open Synergy, and today I'm going to tell you about Open Synergy setup with two automotive-grade Linuxes running on top of the Cocos Hypervisor SDK, which is running on top of the automotive-grade Linux reference platform based on the Renesas Arca H3. So you can see we have an instrument cluster on the left running an automotive-grade Linux, 
And we have an infotainment or IVI system on the right, also running an automotive grade Linux. The automotive grade Linux on the left is also serving up the Word I.O. devices to the infotainment automotive grade Linux. Here you can see the software architecture with two VMs at the top, the IC and the IVI. All the Word I.O. devices which are part of the setup, the hypervisor and of course the AGL reference hardware. So what's new about this demo? The first thing is that we are using the latest version of automotive grade Linux, it's called LL or Lucky Lamprey. And we have of course some other new Word.io features that I'm going to show you. One is for example Word.io Sound, which allows you to use audio being served up by the Linux over here. So it can start the navigation, click a destination. And you can hear that you have audio guidance. Let's have a look at some other features. One is Word.io Video. So this allows the IVI system to use the video decoder and encoder on the hardware again using Word.io Video. For example, I can stop and play a video and you can see it's quite smooth. So again, the system uses the video decoder from the hardware. Another feature we have sensor supporting using Word.io STMI. So we have virtualized the sensors on the platform. So if I click this application, then you can see that the board, if I shake the board, so you can see X and Y movement on the top and the vertical movement at the bottom. So that means we have given the IVI system access to one of the sensors, namely the accelerometer. The last feature I'm going to show you today is camera input. So now the IVI system has access to camera, which you can see, if click here, and we have a camera connected to the HMI port. So I can swipe my hands here. Thank you for joining me today for the description of the newest cockpit controller demonstrator using the latest version of automotive grade Linux Lucky Lambre. See, as these two demonstrations from our expert group members have proved, with Word.io as a common device framework in AGL, we have achieved a virtual AGL which is supportable across different platforms and easily upgradable and extensible across different generations, which are critical to software-defined vehicle. As you might know, AGL has already had the reference hardware for dual-man purpose. The AGL reference hardware has quite modular structure as shown in the bottom picture where the SOC modules and various peripheral modules can be easily replaced. Using this AGL reference hardware together with Word.io already in the AGL unified code base, we can establish a healthy ecosystem around both software and hardware where we can choose various hypervisors, SOCs, and peripherals. In other words, we can obtain the freedom to choose the most competitive virtualization solutions. For more details about AGL reference hardware, please refer to Panasonic's ALS session, Getting Close to Real Automotive Product with AGL Reference Hardware today. In the previous session, we have explained a lot about our EG's work on Vertio for hypervisor environment. Now, let's see our Vertio work beyond hypervisor environment. Our EG has already done some concept level design to use either the upper part of Vertio or the complete Vertio front-end back-end framework to serve as a hardware abstraction layer to satisfy different devices and use cases. We are planning to start the detailed design reference implementation and performance evaluation from beginning of next year. We will start to work from the high-ranked device, for example, input device, which was decided by the AGL architecture team by voting. During the activities, we will also take the production-ready IVI requirements proposed by AGL IVI EG, such as sensitivity settings for touch panels, into account 
to have a more close to product implementation. Furthermore, we think developing and testing AGL in cloud and deploying in native may greatly boost the future automotive development cycle, and cloud native is a critical path to achieve software defined vehicle. However, there are still some challenges around device virtualization for cloud native. For example, a streamlined cloud native development needs standard device interface to absorb BSV differences. Also, Cloud native development for non hypervisor environment needs device interface standardization. We believe Vertio is the best solution to handle with these challenges. Vertio was originated from cloud but extended quite a lot in the automotive world, especially for multimedia devices and automotive specific devices. And now, these devices need in turn porting back to the server and the cloud world. AGL Vert EG will lead further discussion and collaboration across different AGL EGs to handle with these challenges around device virtualization in order to enable a smooth transition to cloud native development for IVR, PR, IC, and other AGL profiles. We also definitely appreciate more cooperation and contribution from anyone interested in this topic. As introduced in the previous session, Vert.io is also applicable to multi-issue environment. For example, a unified virtual display based on Vert.io GPU, which is a unified HMI technology proposed by Panasonic, can be established to have integrity control of multiple displays no matter of system architecture. From application point of view, one unique single virtual display device will be used based on this technology. This technology will be open sourced by Panasonic in GitHub next spring, and then we will apply unified HMI to AGL with Qt and Flutter supported in next summer. We will then release a reference poke in next year AGL AMM or ALS. The below diagram shows a detailed use case and software architecture of unified HMI technology. ECU A is the main ECU where the UI application is running. The OpenGL ES command generated for UI graphic processing will be translated to virtual GPU commands, and these commands will be looped back to the user space and sent to ECU B and C. Then, the command receiver of the ECU B and C will translate the virtual GPU commands back to OpenGL ES commands, and thus, the GPUs on the ECU B and C will be able to render the graphic from ECU A to the display attached to ECU B and C. The location, size, and layer of graphics on different displays will be controlled by distributed Windows Manager. Hence, the application on ECU A can have its graphics rendered remotely on ECU B and C with a control of all the displays attached to the whole multi-ECU system. If you are interested in this virtual display technology, feel free to join our EEG for further discussion. In summary, AGL World EG has a steady progress in supporting virtual devices for hypervisor environment in AGL by completing most of basic and multimedia device for common use cases. Regarding non-hypervisor environment, we have finished the concept design and plan to start actual development soon. In terms of future activities, we plan to start discussion across EG for future work to apply Vertio to cloud-native AGL. On the other hand, unified HMI, which is an example of display virtualization based on Vertio GPU across multiple ECUs, will be planned to be open soon, and we will welcome further discussion and contribution. That's all for our expert group's presentation. We hope anyone interested can join our EG and work together with us. Together with our EG 
members, we will be online today to answer your questions. If you have any, please feel free to tap in the chat box. Thank you.